Tick, tick, boom. Who bringing the noise? Go, baby, we bringing our toys. Separate me from the boys. Chopper be singing, she'll be on the voice. Bang, bang, we gon' ride out. Gang, gang, we don't die out. Want it like this, ain't no timeouts. Tell me who really gon' find out. This is the 2022 Lincoln Nautilus Reserve. It's the Reserve 1, so it's the first level reserve. Starts with the standard. Goes to the reserve, and then you can get all the way up to the black label, which is the real fancy version. Comes with the big wheels. What's the premiere? Is that the base? Premiere's the base. Premiere's the standard. Reserve one, which what this Nautilus is, is around fifty thousand um, dollars. But the black label can get all the way up to around seventy thousand dollars. It's really nice looking. The wheels feel a little small for the wheel wells. Uh, thick sidewalls, which make for a nice ride. I'd agree. It doesn't feel like it's filling the wheel wells as well as like the blackwood with 20 inch wheels yeah these are 17 inch wheels 18 18 18 but the black label like we said before i believe get 21 inch wheels you know i really like this color though the nautilus this is flight blue whatever weather you're in it always looks different yeah, i like how this when they turned it from an mkx to an auto it's like the front end they raised it now you've got the declining you know line down the sidewall or the side of the car that kind of it just looks it looks sharp I think another thing I really like of when they changed it from the MKX is the front grille. You know, the front grille looks way better. This comes standard on all Lincolns. It's kind of Lincoln's trademark now, where back then all the front grills would kind of look different depending on what car you got. I also like the headlights, kind of the way they're angled down. Looks not too aggressive, but aggressive enough. So this engine, I believe, is mounted transversely, right? Yeah. Straight four. 2 liter uh, single turbocharged makes 250 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque but you can also get the larger v6 which is twin turbocharged which makes around 350 horsepower and 380 pound feet of torque 100 more in each category if we step inside it does have a keyless entry just have the key in your pocket touch the handle and it'll lock and it has that on all four doors real luxurious interior you get a nice big touch screen i believe this is 13 inches and it really blends in nicely when you turn the car on you realize it is not too bright it blends in real nice with this cream colored um leather that goes across and then i also like the touch of wood you get here yeah this is nice it's subtle everything about this car is very subtle luxury and it's also very quality too if i push on this you're not gonna hear creaks or anything everything's real solid yeah let's look under the hood okay yeah, so it's mounted transversely. Nice, very low. Also, very quiet too, even when the well, even when the hood's open. Yeah, I like the uh, hydraulically assisted hood. You know, not done with a prop rod. Yeah, it's nice. Bronco, our Bronco doesn't have that. Or maybe look at the back. See how much room there is in the back. You know, one thing I really like about the Nautilus is how much leg room you get in the back. It's a significant amount of leg room. I'm 5'10", and I also have significant amount of headroom. I'm not really having to bend over or anything. It's perfect. And like I said, with my legs are just fine under here. Um, you get heated seats back here, as well as a cigarette lighter and a USB 8 and a USB C port. You can fit three people back here. However, I'd recommend two. Fitting two people back here is a little more comfortable than three. A lot of room in the trunk. Um, fits a pair of golf clubs easily can fit a couple more than a couple yeah, yeah a three money. four that might be class leading yeah especially uh, here. yeah class leading room especially if you fold down the back seats you can get significant amount of room um what do you have here the buttons to automatically yep fold either seat 12 volt charger power. all right let's say we uh hop in and take for a drive all right first thing you kind of notice in the Nautilus when you pull out of the driveway is how quiet it is. Sometimes you feel like it's an electric vehicle. You can't even really hear that engine. As we get up to speed a little bit, you can't even hear it. It's kind of creepy quiet. Isn't the kind of their new motto effortless luxury or something like that? Yeah, yeah, similar to those lines. And I mean, I think they've really kind of stepped up their game in the past couple of years. I was thinking about it and since they changed the names from the MK series and they've named the Corsair and the Nautilus, the luxury of the cars has gone up dramatically. I think you're right. I think it's part of that makeover. They, I think 
the whole MK naming system was an effort to try to mimic the foreign competition, the Germans, and they gave up on that and returned to their roots where people had a town car or a Continental or whatever it may be. They've kind of focused more on not outdoing the Germans at what the Germans do with the tight handling and everything, and I think they're probably going more after Lexus now. In many cases, beating Lexus at their own game. And I yeah. think that makes sense because most of the people that buy these cars, if you go to southern Florida, you see these cars all over the place, and most people aren't looking to take them to the test track. They're yeah. looking for a nice, comfortable, quiet ride. But also, if you want to get one up in uh, northern Michigan or in the northern United States where there's snow, they offer an all-wheel drive version. So this this primary competition. RX350 from Lexus, the, the XTS from Cadillac, and I think it's a little bit bigger inside than both of those. But this is based off the Ford Edge platform, correct? Yeah, yeah. and it shares a lot of the powertrain, so this engine, what's interesting is Ford and GM to a large extent have gone to the 10-speed automatic transmissions, but this has an 8-speed automatic transmission that it shares with the Edge. I have found about the 8-speed, however, is that there's a lot of complaints about it. Um, I know with the Edge too, especially the ST, they complain about it missing shifts and upshifting weird, especially in like sport mode, it'll miss a gear. And also I've heard in the Nautilus that it's kind of a liability issue. And I'm not sure if it's that's because it's an eight speed or what, but one thing I was worried about getting into it was that this big touchscreen was gonna get in my line of sight. Um, Cause you know, in the Tesla, it's so large that Sometimes I look over and all I see is the screen, you know, like it blocks my line of sight a little bit. Um, but in this one, it blends in perfectly. I think the 13.2 inch display blends in nice with the dash. Um, and it's not like, it doesn't stand out to a point where it's like, oh, look at me, I'm all about technology, where it has that those features, but it just blends in nicely. It's not quite as in your face with it. I, you know, having, seen the bigger screens in multiple configurations from the Tesla to the Explorer. I like the, the what do you call it, landscape orientation. I agree. Better than the portrait. Um, it just seems more useful. Like here you can have what you want on this little window. So you can really have, you know, you can have navigation over here while you've got your audio over here or, you know, you can switch whatever you want to whatever you want to do and it's it's really just clever it feels like there's plenty of room they're not packing a bunch of stuff in a little space and the system it uses responsive. it uses ford sync now it's a slightly different version i think the colors are different but it's off based off the same program there's a bentley right there it's nice looking oh, yeah that is nice let's um let's get up to highway speed and see how sounds in here there is a sport mode but we're not going to use that it's um on the piano keyboard which um allows you to change your gear i guess drive modes neutral reverse park and in the mkc and the mkx they had it right along here and it was like a push button right where this is a piano key and i like it i think it fits in real nice it's not really in your face yeah i have to say this interior is really nice looking it's Dark wood, lighter, soft touch materials. One thing I also love is the big moonroof. One thing I noticed with the moonroof is isn't in some other cars when you get up to highway speeds, it creates more noise in the cabin. Where in the Nautilus, that's not an issue at all. Still very quiet. If you were to get a Nautilus, would you get the black interior or more of the cream interior? Um, it's nothing specific. There's a Ferrari, a red one up there. There's nothing specific to the Nautilus. I just, in cars in general, like the lighter tan interiors. It doesn't feel as dark and cave-like inside. It's a little more. It feels bigger. And this, the cream on the Nautilus especially makes it feel a little more old school luxurious. Yeah. It's nice. One thing I also like is the dashboard. Now, is that all digital? That's all digital. It comes standard across all Lincoln, um, all Lincolns, the Navigator and the Aviator share the same dashboard as well as the Corsair. Oh, do they? Uh -huh. yeah, that's pretty neat looking. It is. It's very, right, it's very simplistic. It sounds level is in here. Getting about 55 or 56 decibels. Now that's only 55 miles an hour. That's not 70 or 80. 
so it might be louder, but then it's pretty darn quiet. That is really quiet, wow. Should you see how this straight for does? Yeah, but wait till you get it straightened up. Yeah. Feels pretty good. As a quick little zero to 60 around that, but since it's um, front wheel drive, you could really actually feel the front wheels break free and kind of fight for traction. And I think that's mainly due to the fact that these aren't really track oriented tires, more road yeah, well, oriented. Yeah, these turbocharged engines too have quite a bit of torque, so I think that you're feeling some of that too. Um, not something you'd really want to uh, do that quite often then though. It's not really made for that, you know? Doesn't give you the thrill of like a Explorer ST, which is more of a mid-size SUV that's made for that. Yeah, plenty of plenty of oomph on an on-ramp, but not something that you're gonna go out looking to do all the time. So what's the uh, what's the sound system here? What does this have? You know, is this a Bang Olufsen? Or is that the Ford? That's the Ford. I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't think they share a sound system. This is a upgraded one, I believe. Um, should we test it out? Obeying the rules and building bread. I come here with no so shamelessly true about That is good, you really kind of feel the bass in it. It's nice. In the Nautilus, um, you can get adaptive cruise control as part of a technology package. That is an extra eight thousand dollars so this one does not have it but it does have lane keep assist which will kind of keep you in your lane if you start to travel out the steering wheel steering wheel will vibrate letting you know like hey dummy get back in your lane the exterior upgrade when they went from the mkx to the nautilus wasn't huge i mean you can still tell the same vehicle it got the kind of lincoln trademark grill but they also as you spend more time with it you notice they kind of made it curvier and they've done that with all the vehicles, right? The MKC became the Corsair, and it's it's a little curvier now. And it's it seems subtle at first, but as you spend more time and get more familiar with them, I think they did a, a nice job. It's it's appealing to the to the eye. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video on the 2022 Lincoln Nautilus. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.